Welcome back. This is the first March episode of 2020. I'm Jay. And I'm Martha. And this is Exploring the North Shore. And Martha, for this episode, we are going to go... I know we're here a lot. <laughs> yes, this is a sledding episode. And to go sledding, we're actually going to go on the Gunflood Trail again. So we're going to pack up the gear, we're going to head out, because we're going a special kind of sledding. <laughs> so for Jay and Martha, this is Exploring the North Shore. Who are you and where are we and what do you do? My name is Jasmine. I am the head musher at Gunflint Lodge and we're gonna go dog sledding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Run away. Visual oh. really quick for that since you can't see what just happened. <laughs> it's feeding time for the dogs and a bull was on a slightly, I don't know, well-packed icy <laughs> hill and it was running away. So, um, okay, so Jasmine, you are the head musher. Where are you from? I'm from a small town in west central Wisconsin called Osceola. You may have heard of it for our famous Cascade Waterfall. Beautiful small town right on the St. Croix River. And have you always been into dog mushing? I've always been into dogs. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to college, I saw dog mushing as an internship opportunity, and so I, I just took it and ran. Nice. Literally. <laughs> and how did you end up on the Gunflint Trail? I wanted a dog sledding job where I could be a little closer to home, and, and this was a good calling, so... That's, that's how I came here. And how long have you been here? I've been here since October, so it's my first winter, but I plan this to be the first of many. Excellent. And what is your favorite thing so far about this job? Favorite thing has to be how vast our resources are up here. We have Lake Superior an hour away. I can see Canada from our dog sled trail. <laughs> we have high cliffs from another view of a trail. Um, and I, I get to spend my time with 16 dogs, so I think that's pretty amazing. How did you learn to do mushing? I started interning for a big racing kennel in northern Wisconsin. Um, I handled for a lot of her races, helped her train her team, um, got to know her dogs, and it was just so cool. And then I started doing tours last winter, and then I found myself here. All right, now let's take a look at the sled here. Um, what is this actually called? This is a toboggan style dog sled. The sled has runners and it's, people compare it to skis. And then it's got my handlebars and then the basket is where my guests, you guys will be sitting. Um, I'll put a couple pads down to, to give it a little more cushion for you. And then we have the cable that runs through the middle of the team called the gang line. The dogs are hooked up to the gang line through a neckline and their tug lines. The tug lines help them pull, the neckline keeps them in line and then, um, then we take off from there and you'll get the full experience. All right, and how long is the ride gonna to be today? The ride we're taking is gonna be about four miles. We'll go down a hill, up a couple hills, we'll go around a couple corners, down to Lonely Lake, we'll take an awesome spin around the lake, and then we'll come back the same way we just came. And then, so we could fit both Martha and myself on the sled along with you? Absolutely, I love taking friends, families, couples out together. Um, makes it a good experience to be able to do it together. So. And how many dogs are going to be pulling us? I, I have seven on the list to take you two out today. Um, sometimes I'll run with six, sometimes I'll run with eight or nine, just depending on who's in the sled, and kind of create the team around the clientele that we're taking out. You can hear them, they're getting antsy. And so they love running, is the implication I'm getting from the look on their faces right now. Yes, they, they love their job, they love running. They know that when I bring them out of the kennel and put them on this drop line here that they know they have their job to do and it's not just a job to them, it's, it's their, their livelihood. They, I mean, they're born for this and they're, they love it. And what are their names? Who do we so have here? So the, <laughs> the seven that I've brought out today, we're gonna start with our leaders. We have Iris and Caro, and then the dogs in either Swinger Point, depending on who you ask, <laughs> will be Lilac and KT. Our team dogs will be Mango and Canyon, and then our solo wheel dog will be Mako. All right. And how long will this four mile trek around the lake take? Usually about 30 to 35 minutes. Depends on the weather. If it's a little warmer, it might be a little slower. If it's cooler, they're just gonna wanna book it. So <laughs> we kind of roll with the punches day by day. All right. Okay, so Martha, you've never been dog sledding before, right? No, no, I have not. Okay, and I haven't either, so this is going to be exciting. <laughs> What's exciting. the sort of, is, are there warnings that you give to people? I usually tell people that the takeoff for this specific trip is very quick. Um, it's a 
immediate downhill and it's kind of bumpy, but it's really fun. And then it smooths out a little bit from there. And I just tell people to just take it all in, ask questions along the way if you have them, um, take some pictures, and, but really just enjoy your ride. And where do you see this job, so this position right now, where do you see this taking you in the future? In the future, down the line, I'd love to own my own kennel and maybe do some overnight excursions into the wilderness and have people just really get in tune with the dogs and drive their own team behind me and, you know, really build that connection with nature and dogs, kind of and guiding their way. Have you done any racing? I ran the 60 mile portion of the Apostle Island sled dog race in 2017. I took fifth place. I was racing with my fellow interns. Um, John took third place ahead of me and then Alex, she ran the rec run and she took first place. So it was kind of fun. We, we took, we all placed and had a lot of fun with it. And do you plan to do any more of that in the future? In the foreseeable future, no. Um, I'm very content with the, the touring aspect of it, but who knows where, I'll, where they'll take me. And have you had any proposals on this? Not yet. <sighs> we almost had a proposal today, but the, uh, the, he ended up proposing last night because oh, he no. just couldn't wait. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> patience. Oh, uh, what a bummer. I did see that on the website. We do offer proposals. proposal rides. Um, I think it's super cool and definitely a fun thing. So. so if you're listening to this and you're trying to think of an <laughs> awesome way, the season is coming to a close. When do you end? That's Ish. unknown. Know it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, with the warm weather we're having, it might end sooner than later, but hopefully we'll get some more cold snaps and a lot more snow and we can have a, a good late season. But I project end of March. Okay, so you have, this will come out March 3rd. So you have a couple more weeks if you're trying to think yes. of a good way to propose yes. to get up yep. here. Or just have some fun with some awesome puppies. Yeah. I just, I think they'd be so much fun if you're out on Lonely Island. I keep saying Lonely Island. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it'd be so much fun if you're out on Lonely Lake. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so, all right. <laughs> just like propose to me already. Propose to me. <laughs> nudge, nudge, hint, hint. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to encourage anything. You know, some, somebody's like on their way up here listening to this going, well, you're taking me to Gunflint Lodge and we're going on a dog sled. And like, Wait oh. a second. <laughs> Not implying you should do it. Just if you're planning on it, here's an idea. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and when the season ends, what are you doing? I'll be here at the lodge. I'll be working outfitting with Mandy. Um, she's my supervisor or my manager. Um, and so I'll be working some outfitting stuff with her, helping her get people prepared for trips, maybe driving people to their Boundary Waters um, entry, uh, really getting them excited for their trip as I drive them there and get their gear to them. Um, get them really excited for that. So I'm pretty stoked to be at, at such a cool place doing some pretty cool things. So yeah. now this episode, so the podcast episode here that we're listening to at this moment is this is an episode about dog sledding. However, we are also working on a Women of the Gunflint Trail series, which you are our first feature in that. How do you feel about, you know, previously there have always been female mushers, I think, but it's been pretty male dominated. But in the recent years, there's been a ton of women. Yes. And what do you think of that? First off, that is so cool. My mentor, her name is Crystal Hagstrom. She's in Ashland, Wisconsin, <laughs> running her team. Um, and <laughs> as a mentor, I was so happy to have uh, Martha, female Martha's leading going me. to work, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Martha, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, typically it was a male-dominated sport. And in recent years, the Iditarod has seen an outrageous number of women participating in that event. It's so cool to see all these ladies coming together to join forces in this sport. Um, some ladies I look up to in this industry are Erin Ultimus. She's here on the Gunflint Trail. And then of course, Crystal, my mentor. And then Anna and Christy Barrington are in a, they own a kennel together called Seeing Double because they're identical twins. Oh um, and so <laughs> I that think is so clever. They, they are an awesome, awesome duo of oh, sisters Martha. and twins. <laughs> Martha, get to work. <laughs> So, yeah, many amazing ladies in this sport, and I think it's all about the connections and who you know, and, you know, everyone is always more than willing to answer a question and ask questions and lend a hand and just be friendly and help people get into this sport because it's just a cool thing that people need to do. So, yeah. All right. Anything else you wanted to add? It's a bucket list thing. That's what people tell me. They're like, this has been on my bucket list. I've always Martha's, wanted to do this. We have to do our 
our bucket list episode. Our, yeah. We're oh, going to do a bucket list there episode you go. where we talk about that. <laughs> and now we can take, well, we won't put dog sledding on it because by the time already, we do that, yeah, we'll have already we'll done, already it. done it. Yeah. So if this is something that you need to check off your bucket list, absolutely do it. Whether it be here or somewhere else that's closer to your home, just do it. You won't regret it. People are, you know, it can be a little scary going 10 miles an hour down the trail being pulled by dogs and having a guide at your... <laughs> behind you guiding your team but just bite the bullet and do it just cross that put that check on that bucket list so all right that's what i gotta say well <laughs> i think it's time we're gonna gear up here get the dogs ready get martha martha's gonna start off i'm gonna be doing some video so there will be a little video companion to go along with this i feel like that's required because yeah i've i've seen see videos it. of dog sledding i'm like <laughs> i can only imagine what it's gonna look like with martha and i on it so <laughs> There's gonna be a point where we're both on it, a point where just Martha's on it, and we're gonna bring that to you. So be sure you check out the YouTube channel, link to that on our website, exploringnorthshore.com. So thank you so much, Jasmine. I'm thank excited you. to do this. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. This podcast episode is sponsored by Cascade Vacation Rentals. They know that life has a tendency to be overwhelming at times, and busy schedules often leave people feeling overwhelmed and disconnected. That's why they're here, to offer you the space and opportunity to reconnect to what's important. Cascade Vacation Rentals has one of the largest selections of privately owned vacation rental homes and cabins on Minnesota's North Shore of Lake Superior, from Duluth to the Canadian border. Their team is there to help you and your family or small group enjoy a vacation you'll remember for years to come. Visit them online at www.cascadevacationrentals.com. And don't forget to use promo code PODCAST for the largest percent off discount available at any given time. Again, that's www.cascadevacationrentals.com. So we've got seven dogs. Everybody's got a partner except for the male in the back. He is pulling by himself. He's ready to go. They are all so ready to go. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. So it's going to be kind of a quick takeoff and we're going to go down a hill. It's a little steep, a little bumpy, so just be prepared for that. All right. I'll be on the brake, try and slow us down best I can, but... Sounds good. All right, line out. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Come on, Mako. Jump that line, buddy. Mako. by puppies, good dogs. business. So can I just oh, pop? do you want me to carry that? Yeah. Okay. Kind of oh, that's okay. I don't, I mean, Hi, Martha, I'm a backpacking guy in the summer sometimes, so, <laughs> or I've been one. Stop getting very comfy with you. <laughs> well, you're good friends now, if you weren't before. <laughs> no. Oh, no, we're good. <laughs> um, and then I'll actually have you just tuck that flap however you feel most comfortable, um, whether it be like under your feet or on top of your lap. Um, okay, and are you two ready? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to know where we're going? No, can you hold it so I can record? Oh, true. So I'm on now. Okay, yes. so Martha and Jay are now. Okay, are you ready, board. guys? Yes. yes. Okay, team, hut. I'll be a little slow going getting up this hill. Hut! Hut! I mean, I can't really 
blame them. We're like, a lot it's of a little here. warm today. Yeah. I hear you guys have done a few runs today. So. We have. Saturdays are the busy days. Oh, Over President's Weekend, we did 20 tours in two days. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. And those tours were our sprint runs. So it's the trip you're doing now minus the lake. So what you guys are doing is about four miles. And then the sprint is just about a mile less. <laughs> hut team, hut. Hut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting, so I'm just trying to think. <laughs> no, you guys are good. Get anything. Good dog. <laughs> yeah, he's goofy. He'll just bounce back and forth. I think he's thrown <laughs> off by being like low in there. Well, Why he'll jump over to avoid oh. running us into the snowbank or taking corners too sharp. Okay. So that's where a single wheel dog comes in handy. Okay. Yeah. On by. Woo. Good dogs. <laughs> so they've been running the sprint all morning and I blocked off the sprint so that they'd go down to the lake. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see how they do. <laughs> they might try and jump the hay bales. Oh, oh, God. We'll see. <laughs> I put my good girls up front, so we'll, <laughs> we'll see how those two do. But we're about to take a couple little corners and they're they're really fun and because the sled will kind of slide out around you so it's pretty sweet and then when we get down to the lake so first we'll take the two corners and then we'll go on the path to the lake and it's a little narrow it's a little a little bumpy going down so okay. just kind of bear with me on that okay and then when we get down to the lake i'll have one of you roll out you can take some pictures okay. and then um, when we get back onto the land off of the lake then it would be a good time to jump back in the sun whoever whoever that would be Whoa. Oh yeah, I suppose you said you did go on it. I did, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet for a minute here because I'm gonna be navigating. Okay. <laughs> trade out the backpack. Uh, oh, if you just sorry. want to go out onto your knee, hands and knees is the easiest yeah. way. Here. No, puppy <laughs> I'm out. Okay. Woo. Give you that, right? That was a good leg <laughs> Oh yeah. All right, Martha, you all good? I am ready. Okay. All right, you good if we leave you? Okay. All right, team. Easy dogs. Easy dogs. What have your favorite podcasts been that you've been on with Jay then? Um, I think when we did the Cedar Shores sauna, oh, that one yeah. was really cool because we just learned a lot of stuff you didn't really think about when it comes to saunas. Okay, cool. And then I really did like the snowshoeing also. It was my first time snowshoeing and I'd never gone before. Okay. So that was pretty cool. And this one's by far got to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad we can uh, be assistants on that one. <laughs> Yeah, people come talk sledding and they're like, it's been on my bucket list. Like, yeah, that's, like, yeah, this podcast is helping me check off so many things. I'm like, I've wanted to do that for so long. Yes. I think it's super, I mean, my favorite part about the job and being in the touring side of it, as yeah. opposed to like a single person running a race. Uh, uh, I really like touring because I like being that person to introduce people to the sport. And, yeah. And being that person who is introducing them to maybe the outdoors for like the first time. Uh-huh. We get a lot of people from the Twin Cities and they, they're not outdoorsy people. Uh-huh. You know, when they come up here, they're like, this is our first like getaway to a rustic place. Um, 
you know, an hour out of town. Not even a huge town anyway. So yeah. It's pretty cool. Exploring the North Shore is sponsored by The Big Lake. The Big Lake is an approachable art gallery and gift shop located in the beautiful harbor town of Grand Marais, Minnesota, as well as online at thebiglakelife.com. The Big Lake provides a beautifully curated and fun shopping experience to complement your North Shore adventures with artists and products that reflect the culture, values, allure, and lifestyle of the North Shore. Shop online at www.thebiglakelife.com and use promo code EXPLORE for 15% off your first online order. Martha, how was that? Um, by far probably one of the coolest things we've done for the podcast. By far my favorite thing we've done <laughs> so far. We that said we were going to do a sledding quite the episode. Experience. I didn't say what kind yeah, of sledding. Yeah, some hardcore sledding. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's like you just like are gunning it down on one of those little saucer things, just like oh, bouncing yeah. all over the we place. We have wood toboggans that I'll take you guys out on later. <gasps> yeah, Sweet. we have a designated sledding hill. It's groomed by our piston bully. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's so fast, so fun. It'll be a little like this, but Smell no dogs injury. in front of you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is there a brake on it? Um, no, no. That's the difference is that the dog sled has a brake. Okay. This I did doesn't. notice that because I was going to say there was a point where we were going down the hill and we were going down the hill into the lake area. Yeah. And I'm like, how are we not going to run the dogs over? Yeah. So you might have heard a crunching noise yep. behind you. That crunching was the brake. Okay. Um, when you don't hear the noise, I'm not on the brake. So yeah, going down the hill, I definitely have to be on the brake. If we're on a flat part... Um, I am probably standing on the brake, possibly not, depending on where we are, because I don't want your tour to be over in 10 minutes because they will just run. I mean, that's what they live for. Um, and then you may or may not have noticed, but every time we went up a hill, I actually jumped off and I pushed the sled up to kind of relieve the dogs of that a little bit, but also just, you know, let them know that I'm there working with them too. So it's a good workout for you too. I'm in the best shape in the winter, like summer body <laughs> out the door. Give me my winter body. <laughs> So it's, it's definitely a workout. Uh, I definitely know when winter's coming because we'll start fall training and we'll get the kids in shape and I'm running more than I've ever run before. So, <laughs> Well, it was my first time on a dog sled. It was Martha's first time. My butt's a little bit sore, but it's my not bad. Hurt I much. think I didn't realize there was a pad and I think I was sitting ahead Too of, far the off of the pad <laughs> yeah oh yeah that probably hurts just a little bit <laughs> but it was so much fun i guess if you like roller coasters yes it's like kids tell me coaster. that kids tell me they're like it feels like a roller coaster and the parents Especially are like when okay. you're like going down you're just <laughs> yeah like, well there's, there's a yeah. point where you're like you're going up a hill and then you said something like oh, okay now we're gonna go back down and yeah. i'm just in my head it's like that that kind of slow move up but then all of a sudden you get to the top and you're looking down i'm like how is this gonna yeah, work yeah the roller coaster is like slowly inch up the track and then going down the hill it's like okay Boom. hang on tight put your arms up it's a roller coaster <laughs> especially that turn coming uh what was it when we came off the lake that yes. first turn oh, we took and it was just like we took where we flung out like I Tokyo to you. drifting <laughs> through the snow I was actually out of the sled at that point doing the video and I heard it and I heard Martha I, I really hope you were recording at that point because the, the sounds coming out of your mouth were hilarious <laughs> I think you were <laughs> so there's a lot of giggling I'm sure we haven't listened to it yet but I'm gonna get back edit this together and I'm sure I'm going to be entertained by Martha. Oh, I didn't yeah. watch the video because I couldn't. I also couldn't see the video as I was recording it. So to see your face. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, because you turned it around. I'm probably back there just smiling <laughs> like a nerd. You, you were. You were pretty. Smile from ear to ear like a kid on Christmas. <laughs> just like, my face hurts. I can't stop smiling. This is the greatest thing ever. All right, so we're going to end it here for awesome. the podcast portion. Thank you so much, Jasmine. And thank, thank you to you. Gunflint Lodge. Of and course. Um, the dogs, whom I won't name off. And also Hannah. Hannah was here helping us yes, today. Yes, Hannah's our wonderful assistant today. It was a great day. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much. Again, um, Gunflint Lodge, you can book a dog sled trip through the end of March probably, if not longer, if not possibly not quite so long. Keep an eye on the weather. Yeah, you can actually just book through our, our website and our dates and our time slots that are still available will be listed on there. So excellent. Pretty easy. So do it. If not this year, there's always next year. Absolutely. We'll be here. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks.
We are now back from our dog sledding slash tobogganing adventure <laughs> of the podcast. Really quick, so we did go tobogganing <laughs> after with Jasmine, uh, after we went dog sledding, and I didn't record any sound, but there is a hilarious video that is out on, I think I also maybe put it on Instagram, but I put it on TikTok. So we're on TikTok now. <laughs> Check us out, Exploring North Shore. <laughs> We made so much fun of that during the Cedar and Stone sauna episode. We did. And we I was really like, did. I've I've spent some time now on TikTok. Given. I love it. Everybody should go over on TikTok and watch that video. Jasmine gets like a foot and a half, if not like two feet of air. Yeah, I have a feeling I'm gonna feel that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to be very sore. I'm gonna go home and take a hot bath, hopefully alleviate that. Because it's more of a workout, just sitting in the sled part was way more yeah. of a workout than I thought it was going to be. You can't just, like, sit there. You really have to, like... You are actively Brace yourself, yourself around, like, turns and all the bouncing that you do. Yeah. And really I was... Hold yourself in there. You had a pad, but, like, when I went to <laughs> yeah. sit down, I didn't notice there was a pad, so I'm actually sitting in front of the pad, so I had no pad between me and the sled. Yeah. For the first... The second half, I was like, oh, there's a pad. I'm going to scooch back a little bit. So I might have some sore... Um, butt action <laughs> but what do you think of dog sledding martha uh definitely something everybody should try yeah. it's totally worth it like what were we on there for like 30 minutes yeah and just that 30 minutes minute like experience was insane it was i i didn't think and also i, I think i completely underestimated what being on dog sled is like yeah it's not like smooth no. and like you're just sailing through. It's like you're on like a mini roller coaster, like bouncing up and down, like getting whipped around corners. It was a lot of fun. And that lake, Lonely Lake, is gorgeous. I'd oh, seen it yeah. before, but never in the wintertime. And it's just really pretty because you kind of come through this opening and there's this open space that's just... Just opens wide up. Yeah, and it's just but there's like nothing on it. There's huge. no buildings on it. There's no, like... Any sort of like electrical line even on it, it's just this complete hidden nature gem. So definitely a lot of fun. Big, big thanks to Jasmine and Gunflint Lodge for that. It was just such a great, great, great experience. And what I love about dog sledding on the North Shore especially is it's very accessible. You don't have to go far. Nope. Like this was a total bucket list thing and it's like we just go up the trail and it's like, oh, we're there going dog sledding. Like, wow, I did not realize it was this close and yeah, that, that accessible. Easy. Yeah. And it, there's like six places in town. So there's like points unknown and I'm going to like screw this up because I didn't look it up. But I'll put on the show notes all the different places you can go dog sledding. Um, Camp Minogen has dog sledding, too. And there's just all these places you can go. So you just call, you book a time, and you go and you do it. And it's super easy, and it's, it's really fun. Simple. Yeah. I don't think it's that simple, and it's really just it's that simple. Really that simple. And then, of course, you can go to the John Bear Grease Race checkpoints that are up this way. There's the Gunflint Mail Run in January. So these are dog sled races that you can go and also kind of interact with the dogs and see the process of a dog sled race. And I don't know, I've kind of got the fever. I want to go out and buy, like, six dogs. <laughs> yeah. Maybe dog not, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Highly recommend it. Check out Gunflint Lodge for that. Um, the Gunflint Lodge and Outfitters, Jasmine, is one of the mushers. I don't know if she's the only musher, but she's the main musher. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that what we mentioned earlier, if you're going to propose, do that'd it. be an awesome place <laughs> to do it. If you want to propose to Martha, she's down for another dog sled ride. She'll probably say no, but... Get a dog sled right out of it. Get a dog sled right <laughs> out of it. All right, next up, we have another segment now. This one is another interview with an amazing like Instagram content creator influencer who has, I don't know, if you don't follow her already, then I'm surprised because she has like 15,000 followers. She does a lot of work up on the Gunflint Trail and the North Shore area. This is my interview with Jenny Anderson, who's better known as the girl of 10,000 lakes. And Martha, this is the end for you. And pretty much I'm just going to wrap it up with Jenny. So thank you for joining us today. And we will see you again in a couple of weeks. Um, Martha doesn't know what I have planned, but I have one more. <laughs> Spring is coming. Spring is around the corner, but I have one more wintertime activity planned. 
and I've personally done it already. I don't think you have. So I'm gonna hmm. I'm gonna make you do it again. Sort of like the ice skating. <laughs> <laughs> Should be interesting. It'll be a first time for Martha doing all this wintertime outdoor adventure stuff. And then after that, we've actually teased our bucket list episode. So I think yes. we're gonna do the bucket list episode. So we'll have one more winter episode, but spring is coming. And so let's create our spring slash summertime Summer bucket, list. bucket list. So if you have any suggestions about um, a thing we haven't covered on the podcast yet that you want to hear or, well, hear us do and then see in the companion videos, um, <laughs> let us know. We have, of course, the Facebook page, Exploring the North Shore, Instagram, Exploring North Shore, and then TikTok, Exploring North Shore. <laughs> yeah, TikTok. TikTok. Join us. And let's have some fun and let us know if you have a suggestion for a bucket list item we should add and maybe we will discuss it and give you a shout out on our bucket list episode. So from Jay and Martha, this is Exploring the North Shore. This is Jay and I'm back and I'm sitting down with Jenny Anderson, best known as the girl of 10,000 lakes. You got it. Yep. Yep. And okay. I always wanted to ask this question. Okay. Did you set out to become a social media influencer or did it just sort of happen? It was sort of a natural transition because I came from a media background. So I did news reporting before this and when I moved back from, so I was reporting in Wisconsin and then I moved back to Minnesota with my husband because he got a job in Minnesota. And I was looking for a creative outlet. I found this video production job, but it wasn't exactly like the storytelling that I had done before. And we already did all these outdoor adventures on our weekends anyway, and took photos on our, you know, for yeah. ourselves for fun. And so it was just sort of like a natural transition from hobby to just making it more public and publishing it and sharing it with more people versus just like my private group of friends. Yeah. So that's kind of how it came about. But you know, it, it just made sense for me because I'm like, well, you know, I always want my friends and the people I know to get more involved in the outdoors. Why not reach out to other people out there? All right. And so you grew up in Minnesota. Mm, yep, I did. In what area? In Woodbury, Minnesota. So it's a it's a suburb. So I didn't really grow up with a lot of outdoorsy things. So like coming up here, it's just like another world. And when did you start getting into the outdoors more? So I was a late bloomer. I I definitely discovered the outdoors as an adult. Um, so when I met my husband, that must have been like six years ago. That's, yeah, that's pretty much when I first started. But in the news reporting world, I did the outdoor beat. So okay. that was also like sort of a new thing for me. So asking all the right questions, you know, I had a million questions for like the people who are out hunting and fishing and doing all these things about like, you know, what are you doing out here and <laughs> interviewing them? So that's kind of how I got introduced as well. And where's your favorite place to go? Um, so I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to suck up to you, but <laughs> definitely <laughs> Gunflint Trail area, Grand Marais, like the North Shore area is just a, a beautiful place to be. And it's really not that far from the Twin Cities if you're in that area or, um, you know, if you're our, our neighbors in the Midwest, you know, this is a destination and the Boundary Waters. Mm -hmm. I mean, this whole area is kind of surrounded by the Boundary Waters. So that's kind of my my love is there. I think, you know, I ask that question every time and it's it's a hard area to beat. There are many beautiful areas in Minnesota, but if you're an outdoor adventure person, this mm. is kind of the Mecca. This is the, totally. the destination. Yeah. I'm always jealous of people who live in <laughs> Duluth or like near here. I'm like, oh man, it's like a photographer's paradise. Mm -hmm. And if I was living up here, man, I, I'm sure like it gets old after a while, but I don't know. Does it get old? I don't know. You know, I find myself, I, you know, I work inside. Well, actually I shouldn't say that. Most of my job is kind of a combo of indoor outdoor. I do a lot of my outdoor stuff on the weekends when mm -hmm. things are happening, like events and activities, but yeah. I, I look forward to it still. And I grew up here. So mm -hmm. this is kind of a return home for me and then can return back to my childhood of yeah. spending my days playing on the spear hiking trail oh, and that's so cool. going out on lakes. So I, as an adult, I love it. And mm -hmm. as a kid, I loved it. You but, always come back. Yes, <laughs> I did. I went through this phase where I'm like, I don't like the outdoors. I'm going to be a city person. So I yeah. moved to a city and I loved that too. That mm -hmm. was great. But then you know, when time came, I was like, okay, I need to get back to that. Yeah. Go, go home. Well, you're so, in a good place. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so, okay, you have the Instagram channel and that's yeah. extremely popular <laughs> and you post, I, the thing I love about it is you're always posting about your fishing adventures. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite kind of fish to catch? Like what's your favorite, do you like the kind of out on Lake Superior or the smaller lakes, the big fish, small fish? Okay. So I'm definitely all about like accessible fishing and like the Lake, lake Superior fishing is super fun. It's like trolling, but you just need this whole like setup. So my like favorite kind is just like walleye, crappies, and if I can, trout fishing. So when I'm up here, I love trout fishing because these um, bordering boundary water lakes, you can access They're them. They're full of them too. <laughs> yes, they have them and like they are a little bit harder to get to. So I think people just don't do it as much. So I love, you know, hiking in there and portaging just a little bit to get in there. And some of these lakes, they do allow augers because, you know, they're not technically in the boundary yeah. waters. So mm -hmm. I love trout, um, but walleye around Lake Mille Lacs, that's only like an hour or so from my house. So it's really convenient. Um, otherwise, everyone loves panfish. It just tastes so good. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, besides fishing, you mm -hmm. spend a lot of time in cabins and exploring kind of the entire Boundary Waters area. I've noticed that a lot. So mm -hmm. what is your favorite Boundary Waters lake Ooh. or just Gunflint Trail, Boundary Waters Lake in general? Sure. Um, gosh, I have so many favorites. Uh, okay. So I love camping kind of near like the rural lake area. And then, um, the, so this is like not in the boundary waters, but it's a lot like the boundary waters, the whitefish chain. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. been there, but it's near Tofty okay. and it's kind of a secret, but <laughs> not anymore, I guess. <laughs> but if you ever get a chance and you like don't have time to find, get a permit or whatever for the boundary waters, look up the whitefish chain of lakes just north of Tofty. And it's like the scenery is just like it. The fishing mm -hmm. is very similar for walleye, um, but there, it's just like an ch entire chain that I love so much because you can actually take your canoe and portage and do wow. the whole camping experience without the hassle of getting a, a permit. The boundary water without the boundary waters attachments. Right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's I, that's one of the questions I ask everybody, and mm -hmm. every time I've gotten a different answer, and I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard to really pinpoint the the one lake. The one of lake. course, there's like I have a couple that are my like secret go to like trout lakes that I can't. My husband mm -hmm. would, would not be happy if I <laughs> exposed those, but um, I will say like accessing through Brule, and then yeah, those secret the smaller kind of fish lakes yes. less known lakes mm -hmm. off of that area definitely and how much time do you spend back here gosh I, I feel like we've come up like every other month this year um it's really far like it can be like a five to six hour drive depending on what part of the area we're going yeah. to um but I probably come up like say like yeah every other month like six times a year if you're following your Instagram channel, uh -huh. you can see a different kind of adventure that you're going on every couple of months. Totally, yeah. And you do step down by the cities as well. You don't just come up here. You go mm -hmm. other areas. What other areas do you enjoy going to? Um, so I love exploring small towns. I mean, there's so many, like, treasures to discover in Minnesota. Um, like, a couple years ago... I went to Laverne, Minnesota. Oh my gosh, I grew up there. You did? <laughs> oh my gosh. I, okay, so I, I, I say, because I grew up here too, I, until I was eight, we lived in Laverne, and then we moved uh -huh. to Silver Bank when I was eight years old. That's so funny. Yeah, like no one knows about Laverne, <laughs> I feel like. And then I went there for pheasant hunting, and I was like, oh my gosh, this town is so cool. Very cute little downtown area. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's changed a lot. I haven't lived there since 1992. Okay, yeah. But I think they're, I mean, same thing. There are cute small shops and mm -hmm. restaurants and just really nice people. Yeah. So if you want that hometown feel like liver in Minnesota is one of them. I, I did love, I loved growing up in Silver Bay. Cause like I said, my backyard was the Superior hiking trail. So mm -hmm. we would go in the woods behind the house and run around as kids. So that oh, was cool. great. But I loved living in Laverne because we had a really tight community. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what the town of, like you said, the small hometown community. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. That is not a front. That's how they are. <laughs> Or at least how they were in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> and they, yep, they still are. They're super friendly. And I feel like no matter what 
small town you go to, people really want you to come in and explore and stay and tour and experience their community. So that's why I just love picking random, you know, small, small towns town. that might be known for like a couple of things that I want to check out or like they're, they're near a state park or maybe they have a fun festival happening that weekend where they show off their community. So that's what we usually do when we're, when we're not up here. Yeah. That sounds like fun. And I do love this. <clears throat> Minnesota is full of some very, mm -hmm. very nice small towns. Mm -hmm. So besides fishing, what else do you like to do on your trips? Yeah. So we do a lot of cabin stays, like you said. Um, so when I pick my cabins, um, we always research like what's going on around there. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes I just like to pick a cabin mm -hmm. location randomly, just based on like the amenities, make sure it fits the amount of people that I have with me or like make sure it has a hot tub and a sauna outdoors, like find that. And then I researched like, where else do we have to go? You know, other state parks or are there regional parks or canoeing opportunities, whatever it may be. So that way, like I'm able to explore a whole new city without thinking about like, you know, I didn't set out to find this city and this cabin, you know. It just happened. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's very serendipitous. And you get to meet a lot of cool people and businesses. And um, and we invite our friends out. So it's it's about the people you're with, too. So mm -hmm. we always make sure we have people we want to be with for a couple of days. And then it's always a good time. But, yeah, we do a lot of cabin stays and then um, camping stays and sort of the outdoorsy theme thing. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And then you just had a baby last, yeah. was it May? Yeah, good memory. Yes, <laughs> nine months ago. Yeah. Wow. Harlan, Harlan Anderson. <laughs> and um, gosh, he has really changed up our our game plan of doing active, like literally before him, it was every single weekend. Let's go do something. <laughs> yes. And now it's just like, okay, who can babysit? Because this is a non-baby friendly activity or but now, you know, he's a little bit older, so we like to bring him on things. And we just bring the grandparents with us. Oh, that's and nice. that always helps. <laughs> <laughs> so how has he been enjoying it? Because he does a lot of the trips with you. Like, you did cross-country skiing mm -hmm. yesterday. You had him on your back. Yeah. How does he like it? Okay, he loves it. I think he's just, like, he just knows the outdoors is the place to be. Because as soon as you, like, get him in the... We have, like, a hiking backpack. As soon as we put him in there, he like realizes, okay, we're about to go on an adventure, like hold on to your horses. And he'll just like look left and right and just be mesmerized by all the trees. Like yesterday we were on Pincushion and um, there's so many like, you know, there's pine trees and birch trees. And I think just like the texture of the trees he's oh, really yeah. interested in. So he just stares at that and it's just fun. Um, and we went to the Boundary Waters with him actually and this fall, this past fall, and we stayed with Voyager Canoe Outfitters, and they have a cabin like right on the the Seagull River, so it's like easy access. So that we brought a pair of grandparents with us, <laughs> so we could go into the Boundary Waters for a couple of days and come back to him and take him out for a day trip and that sort of thing. So and to see like the boat. He like does. <laughs> I know we actually introduced him to the boat like at month one so I don't know if that's like what the DNR recommends or whatever <laughs> but we had you know we had our life jacket and yeah. um you know I held on to him real tight and it's just fun to just you know show him the things that we love about yeah. being in Minnesota well, that's going to be great for him growing up. I have a seven-year-old who's now finally old enough. We're going to do a Boundary Waters trip with oh, him this, fun. this summer. But I keep thinking, like, it would have been really fun to go with him. We had just the one because then we have three and uh -huh. that's a lot yeah. more challenging. Oh, like, man. Just the one I wish I would have taken more advantage of just <laughs> packing him up and just taking him to do all these things. Well, it's never too late. I know. He'll get there. Yes. For He's sure. finally old enough now. And yeah. And I've thought about like, oh, it's like way easier when you have a baby. Cause like, if you're a breastfeeding mom, mm -hmm. it's like, you're, you are the refrigerator yes. and the food. Like you don't need to put, you yeah. know, the milk in the fridge. You just carry it with you. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, it's fresh. Then they get older and they need to start eating real food. And that adds that challenge. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> and I will say it's a lot, it gets even, even easier when they can start to paddle. Oh, yeah. So you're a few years away, but you'll get there. Yeah, a little extra helping little, hand in there. Just a little uh, Give yeah. them a pack to carry some There you stuff. go. <laughs> they can start carrying, like, their own food. Yeah. Then it goes from you to them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so do you plan to do anything big this summer? Do you have any plans already set? Oh, gosh. I don't think we have anything. Do we? Oh, okay. So we're actually 
going to Disney World. <laughs> oh, I just got back from there. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. It's awesome weather there right now, probably compared to here. <laughs> well, when we went there, it was the coldest, I think the coldest week they'd oh. had in over a decade. Okay. <laughs> and like lizards were falling out of the trees oh, and it was that. rainy and windy. So it was kind of miserable. But the nice part about that was like, nobody was going to the parks. The parks were... And we went to Epcot and there was no line for any ride. Oh, nice. You just go from ride to ride and then okay. we were walking around and there it, it was just wide open, no That's people. That's so funny. It's like no big deal for you because yeah. you're We used wore to it. winter coats because, I mean, the wind and rain combo kind mm -hmm. of like put that chill in your bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just threw our jackets on and... Yeah. No big deal. So my kids were like, we're, this is warm for us. <laughs> so awesome. we're cool. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, we're going in May, so he'll be one. Yeah. Um, and we'll do the Epcot and Magic Kingdom thing. And he won't remember a thing probably, <laughs> but whatever. There's <laughs> it's, pictures. It's more for us. Back. That's right. So we're doing that. And then we, we do have a cabin up in um, near Spooner, Wisconsin. Oh. So we'll do a family cabin trip there for a couple of weeks. Um, and then hoping to do another Boundary Waters trip somewhere in there. So you don't have your permits yet? <laughs> no, no, I know I, I should get on that. And I, I know it gets really busy when it's permit booking season. So I'm always like, oh, I need to do it because I know other people are thinking way ahead of me. There are still a lot left. You okay. Have time. Don't That's worry right. about it. Okay, good. But those are the things we can look forward to seeing on your Instagram channel That's in the next right. few months. Mm -hmm, for sure. And hopefully more cabin trips like this. And, um, you know, I just love cabin trips because each season it's so different, like, around this time of year it's so beautiful with snow everywhere and then in the spring the flowers start to pop out and then it's summer and of course it's like lake season and we got the dock to jump jump off of and and fall it's up here it's so gorgeous oh it's yeah just so pretty to be here in fall so if you can make it up in that two-week period where it's just on fire up mm -hmm. here it's the best if you can i mean it's such a tight squeeze and we I never know. know when it's gonna happen yep. so it's it's fun living up here because we get to experience the whole thing oh, so true yeah and we're always like get up here now it's happening it finally started and it's gonna end in two weeks so yeah. you, this is your window okay i'll have to like hit you guys up and be like hey is it oh yeah is it fall peep fall peak season peak season yeah and it usually goes around september 15th through october 1st but it's been a couple of years where it kind of got in there early and mm -hmm. there's been a couple of years where it was it ran a lot later yeah but usually by october 1st it's starting to go away i know well it's still pretty yeah <laughs> then you have what we call the ugly gray season but what i like about the quote ugly gray season mm -hmm. is there's less people mm -hmm. and it's still pretty warm out. So that first couple weeks of October, you can get some warm temperatures and it's a great time to go to the Boundary Waters because there's yeah. not as many people. Totally. Yep. You kind of can have your space and pick out your favorite campground. I agree with you. And like even today, I think the state parks are going to be just, I was saying to my parents, oh, maybe we should stop at Tedaguchi on our way back. But I'm sure it's going to be super busy because it's, it's like 40 right now. Yeah. In February, <laughs> February 22nd and it is about 40 degrees. So yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing a lot of people mm -hmm. are coming out of their houses today to finally get back. You know, a lot of people don't like the cold, cold. Yeah. And so you got to go during that ugly gray season. <laughs> the ugly gray season. Even even in the spring, then we get mud season. Yeah. Well, mud season is combined with waterfall season. So Ooh. you have the, the lake melt coming right. from inland mm -hmm. and you can see them on the highway. But if you go back inland to like high falls at Grand Portage or like Tedeuch and, um, Gooseberry Falls, mm -hmm. all those waterfalls are just going insane. Oh, yeah, I bet. So it's not, you know, the trees aren't quite green yet. The flowers aren't out yet, but mm -hmm. the snow is melting and the waterfalls are crazy. And there's mud everywhere and it's super fun. And, and the spring um, salmon run and oh, yeah, the, yeah. the trout, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Avid fisher people will come up here for that. Yes. Love yes. the fish. Yep. So anything else you want to add or how people can find you sure. on Instagram, but how else? Yeah. So on Instagram, I'm girl of 10,000 lakes and it's the numbers one zero 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 zero. <laughs> people always wonder that. And then I do have a YouTube channel, but it's very slowly coming along. And then Facebook, uh, same thing, facebook.com slash girl of 10,000 lakes. Then my blog is girl of 10,000 lakes.com. All right. So this is Jenny Anderson with the girls of 10,000 lakes. Girl of 10,000. There's not two of you. There's just one. <laughs> I wish there were two of you. A lot less work, but it's fun work, so it's fine. <laughs> well, I'm sure you can probably find uh, 
well, your mom comes along with you, so she could be the second girl. <laughs> 10,000 <laughs> Someone did just say you need to uh, save baby of 10,000 lakes because it's still available. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he should. Oh, yeah. His <laughs> adventures. That's right. And, like, he won't be a baby forever. Boy though. of 10,000 lakes? That's is true. that still That's available? True. That's true. And then what if, like, <laughs> this is off topic, but what if I'm, a, like, I become a grandma? Can I still go by girl of 10,000 lakes? That's I don't know. <laughs> you could just, no, see, what you have is you have a daughter. Uh-huh. Eventually, you give her girl of 10,000 lakes. So you become grandma of 10,000 lakes. I gotta save that, yeah. <laughs> Just start booking up everything up 10,000 lakes, 10, and eventually lakes. you'll get there. That's right. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for sitting down with us today and for your stay here. And the, um, if you go to the Cascade Vacation Rentals, uh, Facebook, Instagram, so on and so forth, we did save those the takeover. So you did a really fun takeover and we have those saved in the highlights reel. Mm-hmm. So, and I'll have a really good blog post highlighting Excellent. my stay coming up pretty soon here. So take a look for that. In fact, that might even be out because this episode is not coming out until, well, we're recording this on February 22nd. And I don't know what two Tuesdays from today is, but that is when, know. oh, that's super Tuesday. So March 3rd, I do know. Wow. See, got there eventually, mm-hmm. but thank you for sitting down with us and enjoy your drive home. Thank you. <laughs>